Putting boundaries is sexy. Using your voice is sexy. Telling someone no is sexy. Going against the grain is sexy. It's Ella Halikas. She is a sports illustrated model, self-proclaimed CEO of Confidence. Modeling is such a superficial industry, so it is hard because it does get to your head. It can trigger eating disorders, self-esteem issues. So when you're in an industry that criticizes your everyday look down to your hair color, your blemishes, any kind of acne that you have, it does get to your head. Why can't I just go to dinner with this person as a friend? Why do I always have to overcomplicate it? Stop putting so much emphasis on, is this my person or not? Just go with the flow. You may look at me and think my sexy appeal comes from the way I look of my body. It's not. Maybe that has like something to do with it. And it's a factor, of course, to be curvy. Cause like automatically like society deems you to be more provocative when you have curves. But the sexiness truly comes from an energy and an aura. How you walk, how you talk, how you address conversations, how you enter a room, the eyes, the gaze. That is what's sexy. I feel like you just gave me like a mental unlock. What is it? We're holding hands right now. <laughs> I'm so, so excited. excited. Welcome back to RealPod. Oh my God. Hi, RealPod. Do you even remember what year it was that you first came? I had to look it up. Maybe 2021. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm so bad with time. Right. You're like, when was that? Because it could have been four years ago and it could have been like six months ago. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, like when you're at the new year, everything's messed up. Literally. So it was like two and a half or three years since you've Crazy. been on. Yeah. I know. So welcome back. Thanks for having me. How are you? How's your spirit? Where's the energy at? Oh, um, I'm good. Lots of moving parts happening. Um, really exciting, like start to the year. I feel like a lot of good momentum happening. I feel I feel good. I feel like ready. It's almost like a new chapter is starting. Um, we can dive into more of that later. But or yeah. right now. Or Let's now. get the exclusive. <laughs> What's the biggest update? Exclusive is she's moving. <laughs> Yay! Yay! People are always like, where do you even live? Like every day I'm like at LAX, like that is home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know my address. No. Um, so she's back. She's not in New York. She's in L.A. And we're, we get, we're getting a new spot in I'm L.A. I'm so happy for you. I, so excited. I literally, everyone just found out before we sat down for the pod that she got this apartment she's been really wanting to get. So I'm yes. so happy for you. We yes. are both going to be on interior design journeys at the same time. I know. And we both need to help each other out. Like, you're on it, though. Like, you get your people involved. You're like, what should I do here with this little corner? Yeah. I'm like, okay, I need to, like, I need to It's learn. really fun because yeah. otherwise it's this thing that you do by yourself. So my mom helped me move in. She's the best. The nice best. to have local parents. Um, And we have this, like, really beautiful thing above our dining room. It's, like, kind of a see-through cabinet it's where we can put, like, all of our glassware. Uh -huh. So we were moving in really quick, like, and my mom is just like, okay, the champagne flutes here the glasses over here the vase here like she just like looks at how it's supposed to look yeah i don't like have that right right yet no i don't either and i think it takes years i mean like our moms are our moms right like they've been around the block yeah. for a little bit they've you know decorated a few homes like we don't have that but you know what else is like i want to find it and so yeah. my, i already i posted that i got that table off of facebook marketplace which by the way yeah do you know do you use facebook marketplace i need to get on it no because i like deleted my facebook years ago okay you need to <laughs> unarchive that shit because literally. facebook marketplace is, is where it is. I literally, my first purchase, and I am like, I want to sell my soul on Facebook Marketplace. No, literally. Because it's like this really sweet girl in like Culver City and she had a marble table that with tax and shipping would have been like a thousand dollars and I got it for 400. Right. No, it's a steal. You'll find a lot of good stuff on there. And I love just getting it like right away. I yeah. hate like waiting two weeks for shipping. Oh, Forget sometimes it. months. Sometimes yeah. months. Yeah. Yeah. What's your vibe? I don't know. Like, do I want that like modern chic? Do I want that like dark like tones of like sexy like pad vibes? Or do I want like that light, bright, like girly <laughs> Wait, vibes? I can imagine walking into Ella's and like, do Disco lights start and the, no, the couch start is on a rugs. swivel. Yes. It's on like a 360 slow motion constantly. That's iconic. And you're just laying on it like someone's painting you. Wait, that's <laughs> iconic. Thank you so much for that. And so really though, what's your vibe? Like what's your like what's I, your theme of the so house? I love Pinterest. Yeah. I've recently been getting into that because you can pull like inspiration and then you're yeah. like, I love all these photos. What do they all have in common? Right. They're all neutral or they all have a marble coffee table yeah. or they all have a beautiful bright colored plant. Yeah. I think my vibe is I want comfortable, minimalist, chic. Yeah. I think for me, like, I'm practical. Like, I was going to get us these really beautiful, like, marble try tables. And yeah. then I was like, Max puts his feet on the coffee table. I eat my dinner at the coffee table. Like, right. I don't want a coffee table we can't use or, right. or we're worried about True. spilling a drop on. True. You know? Like, practical, but also chic. But the practical you know? stuff isn't chic. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not aesthetic at all. It's not. I see you with like a, a a big white shag rug and like a pink velvet pillow on your couch. I will start taking notes. Like, yeah. stop. <laughs> I need you to come over and help me, please. Um, okay, well, that's so exciting. I know. I love that. Coming up soon. We just jumped into the new year. It's the middle of January. I'm 
It's like I'm excited, but you ever get like anxious though? I literally was brainstorming 2024 like plans and strategies yesterday and then started crying. (laughs) No, it's so overwhelming. (laughs) That's actually so real. Um, Real pod. It is so true though. Yeah, it is. It gets overwhelming. And I think we talk about this all the time, like trying to be like overachievers and wanting to do all these things. Like it does get overwhelming and stressful. But I think you just go down to like your, I guess, like a purpose in a way of like, what do you want to be doing? What fulfills you? Like, you know, there's so many like brackets to look at things, but I'm like, what is going to be fulfilling this year? You know, of course you have to make money and of course you have to do this. And of course you have to do this for your career or whatever. But like, what is fulfilling? So it's like, can I read you (laughs) these questions? I was listening to James clear on Tim Ferriss if anyone's yeah. interested and these are the questions he asks himself at the start of every new year you're gonna be obsessed with this I was oh. gonna text this to you oh perfect okay what am I optimizing for so what's the real objective I'm trying to achieve mm. and then can my current habits carry me to my desired future how can I structure my environment to carry me to what I want does the energy I'm putting to this match its importance does mm. this activity fill me or drain me how do I want to spend my days and what do I want to spend my time on like he He asks himself all these questions and takes inventory. And I've been doing it and realizing that I'm way off track. No, literally. (laughs) That's a good perspective to have. I think it goes back to being intentional, too. Like, I feel like we always get busy and, like, everyone's lives gets busy. But, like, are we being intentional? Like, what goes back to, like, the purpose, the why, the... You know, so that's a good, those are good questions to ask yourself. Since we've met, you've done so much. You've leveled up, leveled up, leveled up. I've never, like, it just keeps going. The levels, the levels are limitless. The limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. (laughs) We just saw Mean Girls together. I'm triggered. Like, I'm literally triggered by Mean Girls. can't. I'm like, these are the things where I'm like too scared to slander things. No, me too. Like, I just want to say I don't know the musicals for me. (laughs) I, here's what I'll say. I wish I saw the musical Mean Girls because then I think you appreciate the movie differently. I never saw the musical. True. So we're coming from the OG, and it's it's jarring. <laughs> I'll never forget that one scene, and they all become animals, and they're crawling. And I literally looked over at both of you and Michelle, and I was like, what is going on? But someone did say, they were like, well, it, had you known it was a musical, you probably would have been a little less shocked. I'm no. Like, True. My uh, friend, Chloe, was on the way to Mean Girls, and, and I was like, you know, it's a musical. And she was like, what? And I was like, no. I'm so glad I got to give you that warning before you got it's in the there. It's the red carpet in the lobby for me. Like, where was Getty when we needed Getty? <laughs> like, there was a step and repeat. There was a step and repeat. Is that only at, like, an L.A. movie? theater like that would be a thing like i'm so <laughs> pissed we didn't like film that because that would have been so funny but like they're like in the ropes with the golden like oh, it's just too much it's too much shout out mean girls though number yeah, one will shout always be out. iconic i love tina fey and renee rap yeah. renee rap and the actor who played damien they killed carried, it carried 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 it on their backs like, renee rap i will she is just iconic i i was like i had full body chills i was like all right yeah i'm like the chills <laughs> is excessive down. like it's a musical i had chills her voice is ins- insane yeah that was so funny when you said that You're but i'm like a scene. nerdy like musical singer type that. fan right. so i appreciate like when you hit a high c totally but then the one girl that you said yeah we won't get into it but you're like why is she singing this <laughs> <laughs> i'm like put me in coach yeah, yeah let me put her in okay when mm-hmm. i was nine i had a dream oh <laughs> my god so ella has been leveling up and i feel like so much has happened for you since like mm-hmm. let us into how like everything is going how you're leading it how you're thinking about it because i see firsthand that like you're such a badass and literally what honestly when people say like oh i'm confident i'm I'm like no like ella is like 360 like it never turns off like just this determination and this Mm -hmm. drive to reach a potential that you know that you have yourself like yeah I love that. Thank you. I think just having a clear vision of like what you want to do and how you want to attack it. You're not going to know like every step in between A to Z, but you just know you want to get there. So it's like, what can you do every day to become a better you, to get closer to your goals, whatever that goal may be. I think I look at it in like such an incremental, like every day kind of actions. And then one day you honestly do wake up a few years later and you're like, wow, like I look back, I'm like, whoa, like I've come a long way because of like the actions every day and the consistency. Um, so I think I always look at it kind of like that and it scares me less because when I scare, when I think about the big goal, like what you said, you get anxious, you overwhelm, you may cry. But like if you think about what you can do tomorrow, what you can do right now, and you take those action steps soon, a month, two months, a year, five years in, you'll look back and be like, oh my God, I really did come so far. You know, that's the thing that I think 
I've been learning is it takes five years. It takes 10 mm-hmm. years. I think when everyone wants it tomorrow and then you do realize, oh my gosh, it's five years later and I finally got that thing I wanted. And if you would have told me it took five years, I would have said, nope. Yeah, <laughs> literally, literally. Yeah, you don't realize how long it's going to take. I feel like our generation also gets super impatient and we're so used to immediate results and immediate, like you can have access to anyone with the touch of your finger. Like you can have access to like Uber Eats at your door in like five minutes. Like everything is so quick now with technology that like, with our dreams and our goals, it doesn't apply to that. Like that does still take blood, sweat and tears of like decades sometimes. And like you just are so used to getting stuff so quickly. So when you don't get it quickly, it's like super upsetting and discouraging. And people then stop trying to pursue their dreams because it's not happening now. You know, since you got to L.A. as an entrepreneur and have been pursuing everything that you're up to, what do you think has been the biggest like personal hurdle you've recognized and then had to overcome? Mm, That's a good question. Um, Personal hurdle, honestly, is the patience with timing. Like I, whatever you may believe, God's timing or whatever, I do. And I (laughs) whatever, God's timing. God's timing or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) The universe. But like for me, I just had such a hard time of like knowing I wanted SI, for example, like knowing I could see it and like deserve it and want it, whatever. I was not ready when I thought I was. 2018 was not ready. 2019 applied. Was not ready either. 2020 wasn't really ready. 2021, I finally got it and was an issue. You may think you're ready for something now, but that's not always the case. Like trusting that timing was a huge wake up call for me. A relationship, if someone's listening and they want a boyfriend or a husband, like trust that timing. Don't just give up and sit back and say, I'm going to trust the timing, whatever. You still make actions. You still work towards what you want. But understanding that sometimes like we don't call the shots. You can push and push and push, but you don't get to choose when X, Y, and Z happens. You don't get to choose when you have that dream guest or whatever. I know I'm your dream guest, period. But like you don't get to choose that because it's like it really is divine timing. So I think that was a huge lesson for me. Um, And like personality wise and relationship wise outside of work, I feel like I was a little bit naive when I came here. And I feel like I've always had such a good group of friends and like good people around me. And like, I just I'm I would like to say I'm a good person. And so when you come here, it really kind of like hardens you a little bit. Like it really kind of like ruffled me up a little bit with trusting people easily, you know, believing their words, not their actions. Like I have a hard time with that, whether it's dating or friendships or whatever. Not so much anymore, but that was a huge lesson I had to learn. Like when I moved here, I was having a bestie and I make friends quickly and I love that about me. But like like what were their intentions were they using me were they not like everyone is like so calculated here sometimes that like it was hard for me to make genuine friends until I really truly met you and a few other girls that I'm really close with but like it is hard to make genuine friends nowadays especially in this industry and what we do it's a whole other layer of hard to make friends and relationships that was a hard learning lesson for me people did ask about the rehash of our friendship and how we met and so for anyone who was unfamiliar Mm -hmm. I saw Ella on my friend Katie Austin's podcast and was like she's Greek she's funny she seems like a really great girl like Mm -hmm. so I DM'd you and was like hey like I heard you on Katie's podcast and like we should get coffee and Ella was like yeah and then we got a coffee and then frolicked into the sunset and lived happily ever after it was literally incredible I always joke though like when girls get like coffees or something like we should do this again like we blah blah like people say that you I was like straight up for real no like you FaceTime me the next day like when are we going to the beach and I was yeah. like hi I gave you my number <laughs> <laughs> like we're out of the DMs already like literally um I was so I wanted to ask you mm-hmm. I've never seen someone make as many friends as you like how do you do that you came here knowing no one I lived here for college <laughs> and my family lives here I only know you <laughs> <laughs> You're like, my only friend you. no not like and uh, honestly no I've made more friends through Ella <laughs> Thank you. I would just say I really do feel like I come with like an approachable, fun energy. I come super just genuine. Like I don't come with expectations and that's big. I don't come with expectations. I don't come with calculations. I don't come with a future plan. Some many people might say that's crazy. For me, it's always worked. I like to also open up. I think people open up to me, which is a great quality I would like to say I possess is having people get comfortable enough to share things with me and like vice versa. And by doing that, you kind of share a little bit from, from your perspective, right? And then the walls are now down. When you go up with a high wall and over calculated or whatever, people aren't going to feel soft around you. People aren't going to feel warm around you so it's like when you're like you know dancing or you bump into someone or you're like at a bar or whatever it's like I can literally shoot the shit with whoever and then just keep it at like a very genuine level and then I think that's where people start to be like wait we should hang out sometime you know like it starts Mm -hmm. to kind of flow that way it's so funny because I feel like polar opposite in that I 
have like more of an anxious social tick in my brain of like mm-hmm. who should be the next person to reach out and who should like it was this too much and is it too soon to text and did right. they like it like I think that I used to think that when we first hung out no you told me that I'll never forget I the wall I think yeah. or something I literally right? made a whole ass TikTok that got like three million views after our hangout literally I was like <laughs> what I was like wait was this really like you felt that way no I think I, I was like no this isn't about you yeah, yeah. I was like totally for sure. yeah um Stop to eat like this. yeah but but no it was a good thing but, but but, um, but people can relate to that th- too. Yes. Also, something about you that I want to dive into because it's so common for people is just like mm-hmm. rejection or being told you're not good enough or you can't do this. And it's crazy to me when I hear your stories of, in especially the modeling industry, the constant rejection. It's literally like it's more no's than yeses mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And like probably barely the yeses come few and far between. How do you like keep your head up? Because there's people in this world who get told no once and then they're like, oh my God, I can't do it. And then they shell up. Right. Okay. So rejection is super hard, especially in the modeling industry. And people don't realize that, that when you see that person's win or that booking, you don't see the years and years of perseverance and the sweat and the blood and the no's, constant, constant no's, the wasted money, the whatever. It does hurt. It does sting, especially when you really, really want something and you really, really could see it for yourself and you get so close and then you get told no. Or I've been on hold with a really big job with Peloton and it could have like changed my life financially like two years ago. I really needed that big job. It was like the biggest numbers I've ever seen. I was on hold. I had a call back another callback, three callbacks, and then got released. And I was like, fuck. It was like an international campaign. Damn. I had another one that I was like on hold with L'Oreal. It was like a big beauty campaign. It was like highest numbers I've seen, like really, really great. Like this could really put me on the map for modeling. Like no one knew I was going through this. I never even openly shared this, but like I had a callback and then a casting and another callback, two callbacks, and then got released. Like people don't see that. So when you see me going to New York and booking Target, you don't see that I had three on holds with them like three casting calls and three and a half years of trying to book Target, like quite literally three and a half years. So like, it just takes a long time. You're gonna get told no. What keeps me going, like I said, goes back to your why and your vision. Do you see yourself working with this brand? Do you truly, truly feel it inside of your bones? Like you really, really feel like this is meant for you? It's yours then. It's just a matter of time. And if I don't get one job, modeling's interesting because a lot is focused on physical, where all I preach about is like confidence and, you know, mental confidence and, you know, interior as well. Modeling is such a superficial industry. So it is hard because it does get to your head and it can trigger eating disorders. It can trigger self-esteem issues, all these things. What I tell people is like, if you don't get a job and you get rejected, that job is just not meant for you. And maybe it is down the line, but not right now. And modeling is so specific to you might not get the job because quite simply, you're off by one inch of a measurement that they need for their sample. Or like you're off by like, maybe they just really wanted a dark redhead. Like they don't want a brunette. Like maybe they wanted someone like lighter complexion with freckles. It's just not you. No matter how much you try to change yourself, it won't be you. And I think what gets really sticky is if you start changing yourself for brands and for the industry. And this is veering a little off rejection, but, you know, on brand. I remember I got a job in the beginning and I was living at home in San Francisco, wanted to move here. I got a job. I ended up getting sick. I think it was COVID. Didn't know at the time what it was because COVID wasn't out. I was so sick I couldn't eat. So I had lost like eight pounds in a week, something crazy. I was ill. I literally was ill. The job said I got too small and to come back once I gain weight. I literally got released from a job because I wasn't big enough for them. So at an impressionable time where I'm not living in LA, I don't have the money, I don't have the experience or exposure, that hurt me. Like that really struck something in me of like, well, do I need to change? Well, okay, do I need to get bigger? And I remember I walked into this other job that I had and this is when I got smaller because I was sick and I walked in and not even that much smaller. I mean, it's crazy how much of a, like a thing it is. And I remember the girl looked at me, the casting director, and she looked me up and down and was like, you've gotten smaller. And I was like, oh, I just have like gone through a lot and I've been sick the past month. And she was like, when I walked out of the door, she goes, well, don't lose any more weight or you lose your job. Bye. And I was like, whoa, like I'll never forget that. I don't think I even realized how the reverse of like not even just losing the stereotype is usually Mm -hmm. like lose, lose, lose for models. Mm -hmm. But it seems like there are like these two categories of like a curve model yeah. and so then what does that mean like there's a minimum for curve and if you want to stay curve right it's like you got to go to one ex- like one one extreme, this extreme another... down or like mean like i don't know does yeah. that get in your head then if you're like i mean it's yeah because you just want to live your life right and i want to just be the best version of me is like my whole brand and messaging like be the best you and that looks different for me and looks di- different for the next person so when you're in an industry that criticizes your everyday look and ev- down to like your hair color, your blemishes, any kind of like acne that you have, 
it does get to your head. And then there is two extremes where you have to lose weight if you're smaller on a straight size model. And if you're a curve or plus size, you don't want to get too smaller. Are you curvy anymore? Are you plus size enough now? My whole thing, though, is like if I listen to every brand's critiques on my body, I'd be running in circles. Mm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. If I listen to every single agent, every single, you know, every single agent's opinion on what I should do with my body, I'd be running in circles. I would never get anywhere. Like you have to know what does Ella need and want? What is best for me? What is my best self? Of course I want to work and I and I know my body type will never be a straight size model. So if I do want to work as a curved model, the subconscious mind in my head knows that there's a certain size range I probably need to stay into. Does that mess with me? Probably a little for being honest, but I've gotten to a point where I know how to like balance out my everyday life as well. Um, and maintain a lifestyle that I want to maintain. I like the lifestyle I live and I want to maintain that. I love my workout regimen and what I eat and whatever. I like what I do. It does get sticky, though, when you start listening to the outside opinions. And these people, ha they're literally running your life. They're booking you a job. So imagine if your income relied on how you looked. No, that's insane. It's like sometimes when I um, am speaking about eating disorders and recovery at colleges and I meet with the crew team, you know, there's a coxswain and the coxswain has to maintain like a certain weight. And if you're in the boat, you got to maintain a certain weight. And I'm literally like, that just wouldn't be the sport for me. Like I, I couldn't, it would, it would be hard. It does take um, some sort of unique mental strength because totally. I, I used to think I was like pretty strong with the body image stuff. And then I recently went through this rut where I was like, <laughs> I'm a bit more fragile than I think. Right, um, right. And so, you know, everyone's different. But I think what you're saying, we can also draw a parallel just to like life in the sense that anyone who is constantly taking in the criticism of the world and then trying to please it, you you will also run in circles trying to make everyone happy and to try to figure out this answer and then at the end of the day, but you're the one that goes home at night. Right. You're the one that Lives has to yourself. live with yourself right. based on what these other people have said or told you to do. And right. so I think anyone, like, you know, model or not, can take your message and think, how can I live an authentic life true to myself? Mm -hmm. You know, what I want to do with my day every day, what I want to do with my work and trust that then the opportunities are going to come. But I have to do me. Totally. Totally. And then the right jobs will come. Like, I remember having a conversation with my mom about it, too. It's like, you can't tweak and bend your body for every incoming because that job might have wanted me bigger. But guess what? Another job maybe wanted more of like a size 10, 12, but I was more of like a 14, 16. So like, so now am I supposed to just drop the weight to work with, like, for example, let's say a Victoria's Secret or an Aerie wants me here or this wants me here or Target actually wants you to fill like a size 16, a true 16. So if you want to work with Target, you got to get up to a six. Like, if you just listen to every brand... You would never be happy. You're constantly chasing what someone else's image for you, mm -hmm. you know? And that goes into, like, opening, you know, on the internet, everyone's opinions of you, what's trendy, what's not, you know, the hate comments. I want you – you look be better bigger. You actually looked better smaller. You looked better here. Uh, why are you working out? Are you trying to lose weight? Well, then you don't stand for body positivity if you're trying to lose weight. Well, actually, you should lose weight because you're not healthier. Do you, you eat at McDonald's every day. It's, like, constant, every single angle thrown at you every day. So what has to be strong? You, your mental health, your your mindset. Where do you feel yourself? You know, how are you the happiest? What makes you feel the best when you go to bed at night? Do that. Listen mm -hmm. to you, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know we've talked like sometimes about like the Ozempic and the heroin sheet coming back. And I don't know about you, but like that like gets to me a little bit. Yeah. You've opened up recently too about how you've been feeling around that and like yeah. not to like throw it back at you, but I'd be curious like – at what point do you feel like that confidence that you were having and you were feeling so good about your body, when did that like start shaking up? You said in December, I think, but like, what was that for you? Was it linked to the Ozempic craze and like all the trends coming back to being smaller? Like, cause I think we could have like an honest conversation about that from two different angles and perspectives that people would find beneficial. Totally. It's really hard when you're working on self-love and I'm beautiful the way that I am. And then the messaging from society is like the opposite or mm -hmm. someone that you think is beautiful and great is like on this diet and losing all this weight. Right. What does that mean about me? Right. You know, I think it is hard to stay mm -hmm. in the self-love bubble when the outside people world. are like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would never want to look like you or but I would never want to be a size 10, like whatever they like, you know, what I'm saying like it's it's hard to keep 
yeah. on, in your groove when, yeah. especially like girls message me that their family disapproves of their body or their friends or, you know, it's like their whole friend group mm-hmm. used to diet and be toxic. So it's like, now who are my friends going to be if mm-hmm. I want to have a healthy relationship with food? It's really hard with the external pressures. It is. I think I struggle on some days too, right? I talk about being CEO of confidence, but there are days where I see, you know, ev- like people that are much smaller than me that are talking so openly about like going on it. And like, I love that people can be open about it, but subconsciously goes into you like, well, then should I, t- am I supposed to take it? Like, why am I like, and it, it, it has been a struggle. I think you kind of go back into like your confidence can't be shaken of like, you're your own person. I'm not meant to be her. I'm not meant to be you. And that confidence comes more than just your gene size. And I think when people, it gets sticky when people on Ozempic are just chasing to be smaller and chasing that for happiness. Because quite honestly, I've been at a point where you do extreme things to be smaller and you still get to that point and you're not happy. Mm -hmm. You know, I have lost the weight. I have, you know, gone through really horrible eating patterns and over excessive working out to be smaller. And when I get there, I'm not fulfilled. So that scares me when people try to do that for that reason. Yeah. I come back to like peace is like the word I come back to. I'm just always like, you want peace. You want, you don't want to be like, you don't want to be a hundred and X pounds. You want peace. Like, yeah, I just kind of come back to like, what is my thing? And I think it is important for all of us to come up with our mottos and really get to know yourself so you can have that conversation. Speaking of rejection and, you know, the external validation and all those things, I think it really relates to dating and trying to find that life partner. And you're one of my friends who isn't in a relationship, but I feel like you have a really healthy approach to trusting the timing of that again Mm -hmm. and not making it like this thing that you feel like you can't live your life until you find your soulmate. And I do Mm -hmm. think there are women who feel, you know, like I'm at a certain age or my clock, I need to find this person and then settle and aren't happy. So how do you approach the dating lens when you go on a date and it doesn't work out with a guy or he goes you or you goes him like and not take that personally and let that make you sad? I think for me, it's like I knowing my person's out there and that person will be out there and I have peace kind of knowing that and also just trusting the timing is, again, a big thing to do. I have been more open to dating more than ever before, like in the last six months, and I have been putting myself out there and on some dating apps and like really trying to be, you know, out there. I think with it, too, is I have a different approach before I put so much pressure around dating and pressure around well, this needs to be like this. And then um, what happens and who's going to follow up and how quickly and whatever. And can I see my life with that person? I start to over spiral almost on like his last name with mine. (laughs) No, literally. And like, we've all been there, but it's like when you stop putting so much pressure on a date, when you stop putting so much pressure on dating and you're just like, I'm just living, I'm just doing what feels right. I'm going on a dinner with a friend. I go to dinner with friends all the time. Why can't I just go to dinner with this person as a friend? Why do I always have to overcomplicate it? Like just go. If you don't like them, great. If you do, great. Just keep talking. It doesn't matter. Like, stop putting so much emphasis on, like, is this my person or not? Just go with the flow. You know, date around. I also like to see what I like, what I don't like. It really is knowledge. Like, I used to be so against a roster and against texting all these people because, one, I don't have time, and two, I don't care. But, three, I started to look at it like, oh, well, if I actually did make time for that, I would see that, well, Joe did this, but then Matt didn't do that. And I actually liked when Matt did that. Like, I okay, great. So I need someone that does X. Well, then this person did this. And I kind of feel like I thought I could date someone in that industry, but I feel like I need someone that does this, like, you know, in this industry. Like, you start to see, like, non-negotiables, things that you like and don't like. So that's a different approach that I've been doing with dating. That helps a lot. How do we get you to be the bachelorette? Like, producers holler at your girl <laughs> like they never had a that curvy would, girl oh my gosh wait that would be the Break best the season of the bachelorette ever no literally and i would get to come on like at the last episode to be like that friend that gets to have that conversation with you 100 <laughs> percent. so tell me about your final three yeah and totally. we're sipping tea with a biscuit literally i'm like so john is so cute but this is my thing with him i know i know like no dating shows and that's what i've been like trying to tap into a little bit and like shake up some producers i've had conversations with and just be like what are you guys doing like I've talked to a few it, it is like not okay there's None no curve representation no and not of and not god forbid the bachelorette the main girl but even the contestant <laughs> girls even the girls on the bachelor aren't even curvy or like bigger than a size whatever six, like eight to ten so yeah. it's like it is discouraging and I think for a lot of people the, the advertised woman is a size 14 why is the advertised woman not being represented in media and tv so true I didn't even know that Average woman is size 14 in the U.S. You know, I rewatched The Devil Wears Prada on a flight recently. Have you seen it recently? Icon- iconic. I need to watch it again. It's iconic. So watch it again. One it's such movies. a good movie. Yep. But now in 2024, I'm p- I was picking up all these like lines that are just 
literally like they're try- they try to pass Anne Hathaway off as a quote fat girl. Mm-hmm. They call her that like twice, and then she says she's a six. Okay she's not a six and they're like right. and you need to be a zero to two and it's like she, and they're already mm-hmm. having a two four in the role like so it's just watching it nowadays you're, like it all is. the body image stuff is like insane we'll sing all the america's next top model and like all those, those videos are like, no gnarly. wonder we all have issues gnarly gnarly like your hips are too big love like like, you'll never be a model, sweetie. Like, you need to be thinner. Like, they would just be so straight yeah. up like that. That was so, so wrong. You know, I used to want to have a podcast um, with Natalie when I was a freshman in college because I was, like, I was interning for Kelty Knight, and she had the lady gang already. She was, like, so before the podcast time. And I was, yeah. like, I want to do a podcast, but Natalie was in a different state, and Zoom wasn't a thing, so I thought we couldn't do it. In hindsight, I am so glad we never did it because I was so Timing. in a different wrong place with myself and my body. Like I would have been like preaching, like mm-hmm. here's what I'm doing for my summer beach body because like that's what that's what I lived in. 100%. Like hundred percent. I can't imagine how Tyra Banks feels like watching. No, the, I the know. Videos. I know, but that goes back into timing too. Thinking that you wanted to do that and that you like so could do this right now with Natalie, and like looking back, being like, "Thank God I didn't have that then." True. You know? True. It goes back into like thinking you're ready for something when maybe the timing's not right. True. Just a side, just a side note. True. It also is like so hard to grow. Like we're young. We have so much that we're gonna do and learn, and, and it is this weird pressure to be like growing on the internet. You know, mm-hmm. you can only hope like people realize you're human. It's hard, and I think. Going back into body image, though, that I think fr- like people might find um, value from this, too. I always say watch your environment and your friends. Going back into, like, friends and, like, going through hard times around your body. Did you ever have friends that would, like, like when you would hang out with them, you just talk about your bodies or, like, look in the mirror and, like, wish that you guys were smaller or, like, talk about, like, jean sizes or, like, that you couldn't do something in high school or, like, a prom, whatever, unless you were X amount, like, a small. Like, just thinking about that's kind of a random question, but... It made me think of something that I overheard at a dinner one day. Mm -hmm. Um, Did you ever go through that with friends? Totally. I cringe thinking about the conversations I would have as early as middle school. Like, you know, talking about how I wasn't thin enough, making someone feel bad about their body. Like, because it's all I saw in media. It's all I knew was like, we need to be skinny. And if you're not really skinny, then there's a problem. And like, so what's wrong with me talking about the problem? Like, I I hate it. And then I'm like, Mm -hmm. I was also 11 and I didn't. I didn't know like mm-hmm. that I was projecting the the fact that I would cry and feel so embarrassed and that my brothers would call me fat and lard and grab my stomach like as brothers do whatever like you know you mm-hmm. like it's and then I I also feel like the reason that I'm really sensitive about um Max not making comments about what I eat is because I feel like you know, I always felt like, am I being judged for the size of my plate? Or if I go get another snack in front of my whole family, are they going to be like, why are you eating again? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, so all that stuff, it affects you. (laughs) Totally. I remember being in fashion week recently in September and I was overhearing a conversation at dinner and it was these girls that were younger. I don't know how old, maybe whatever in high school. And they were sitting at a table next to me and I just couldn't help but hear that because they were talking loudly right next to me. The whole conversation was about how they want to be smaller. Like, I'm 120, but I want to get back down to, like, 110. And, like, I was 110 last last year. So, like, I don't know what happened. This like, And it just, like, broke my heart. Mm. And I just was listening to it. And I just, like, honestly, like, couldn't even eat. Like, I just was so sad. I know, and you want to say something, right? So bad. But it just made (laughs) me think about, like, I'm so glad at what I do. and And I don't take that lightly and that role lightly. But it also shows how much, like, farther and more we need to do. Right. It's not, like... Like, there's not still there's done. still issues. I was in um shopping at a store over Christmas and there was this mom and this daughter and I just kept hearing the mom say things like she was like, I think I'm gonna grab this. She was like, You're no longer a six, you need the eight. Like she was just like oh, kind I of know. like sassily being short short, and then the girl came out in the outfit and she was like, It's like really tight. And I wanted to be like, I'm a ten and it looks great. Like I wanted to say something, but like you can't. Like that's their relationship. But I'm right. like I don't know. I just felt so bad watching this mom like kind of like passively make her daughter feel bad that she needed bigger sizes. Like it's just it's sad. It is really sad. And like overhearing it and just feeling like we just hold so much importance and so much energy on our bodies. Mm -hmm. Like truly think about it. Like it's wild. Okay, I want to talk about like feeling sexy in your skin Mm -hmm. because I think 
you know, I'm on this sexy journey and I think it's been going well and I've been really embracing my body more. Yes, queen. So how do you like do that? How do you approach that? And people would maybe look at your Instagram and, you know, you're in bikinis and you're in lingerie and like you really are loving your body and like your body is a part of your aura, which is a great thing. So Mm -hmm. how do you like merge those without putting too much emphasis Mm -hmm. on the appearance? That's a good question. Like I said, being in the modeling industry, it is superficial. You can't run from it. It's down to like your measurements, your hips, your body, your bust, your waist, like quite literally. And there is something to be said about feeling beautiful and sexy in your skin and wanting to show and embody that. But then there's another side of me that like shows the importance of my voice and going on podcasts every month and doing interviews and doing things like this where I can use my voice that I have inside me that I think is much more powerful than my body will ever be. I think being sexy is not just what my body looks like. It's not just because I'm a 14 and curvy and voluptuous or whatever you want to like describe my body to be. It is a mindset. Like it quite literally is a mindset, how I carry myself, the energy when I walk into a door, like that to me is sexy. Like being about my business, being like a boss, like that is sexy. Like it's, you may look at me and think my sexy and my sexy appeal comes from the way I look of my body. It's not like maybe Mm. that has like something to do with it. And it's a factor, of course, to be like curvy because like automatically like society deems you to be more like provocative and whatever when you have curves. But the sexiness truly comes from an energy and an aura and like how you walk, how you talk, how you like address conversations, how you enter a room, like the eyes, the gaze, like that is what's sexy. I feel like you just gave me like a mental unlock. What is it? That, that, that I feel like this sounds so silly to just be realizing, but that the sexiness is the inside feeling. Like I should be able to close my eyes naked and feel sexy, not look in the mirror and feel sexy. Mm-hmm. And I think I've been like confused because I've been like, I got to look at my body in the laundry. I got to look at my body in this bikini photo. And it's not that. It's exude the sexy energy that flows the confidence through your body. Like you should feel sexy Truly. with your eyes closed is like, would you say what you're trying to say? Yes. And it's an energy. Like I said, like, it's not even like, did I feel sexier at the Golden Globes or yesterday at the gym? Probably yesterday at the gym. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. Like, because I felt like powerful. I like wear my cute outfits and like, I feel like empowered. I feel like sexy. I feel like so ready to take on the world. That's sexy. Like, it's not like the glam and the makeup and the hair. Like, of course, that makes you feel good on an outer perspective. But I'm really, really talking that like the energy that I carry, whether you want to call it sexy or confidence, it is internal. And that's what people miss the mark on almost every time when they meet me or see my page because they think it's just how I look. If I were to, in a crazy world, whatever, let's say, um, hypothetically, were to lose 50 pounds and maybe I was a smaller build, I would still be super sexy even if I like <laughs> lost my curves and whatever because that's how I carry myself. I would still feel, not be, that's aggressive, yeah. still feel sexy, sorry. But but then it, let's say if I gained weight, like I know that like that comes from within. Okay, how do we channel the energy? What are a few quick things that we could try this week, or I can try it as well? Asking for myself <laughs> and me, everyone myself listening. and I asking for a friend. <laughs> me. Okay, you gotta like visualize it, right? So like you said, you're closing your eyes. You're really seeing yourself down to like the skin, like who you are, like the soul of who you are. Like you see that, you feel that, and like you're content with who you are. Then it's like maybe you're putting on music that makes you feel good. And like it's like every morning and you're like putting on this music and you're setting the tone for the day. You're setting the vibes for the day. Maybe you're doing your affirmations and you exude this like bad bitch know your worth confidence, which then leads to like a sexy aura. But like it's that bad bitch confidence of like knowing your worth, getting after what you want, like putting boundaries is sexy, like using your voice is sexy, telling someone no is sexy, Mm. like like going against the grain is sexy like going against what you've been told your whole life is right and doing the opposite is sexy like Mm. challenging yourself taking a risk moving la when like whatever that was sexy like i just changed my perspective on what that is you know so it's like take the risk be bold today like do something crazy try a new coffee shop be mysterious today like that's sexy like try a new outfit that you wouldn't really wear and like go take yourself on a solo lunch date instead of the bar and be freaking mysterious because that's sexy like (laughs) Walk into a room and make eye contact with maybe someone you find cute or just someone and like smile with your eyes at them and like feel just like empowered with the aura and the being of who you are. Mm. Like that's hot. How did you just rattle all those off? I don't know. Well, you were just like, you were overtaken by the sexy. I was overtaken. I love how none of that had anything to do with how a person looks. 
100%. Which is the opposite of what we've always been told about sexy. 100%. So anyways, I'm going to clip that. That's my alarm every morning. Period. I love you. I'm so <laughs> lucky to have you in my life. I love you so much. Bestest friend and girl chaos. Oh, I love you. Thanks so for coming back. Love you. Love you. Love you.